Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I want to thank you for joining us again for this um, one o'clock hour for Up Close and Personal with Angela. Of course, I am Angela Thomas-Smith. I am the founder of AALAC, the African American Author Literacy Awareness Campaign, where I truly believe in bringing awareness to brown authors all over this world. I'm also the CEO of Aspiring Authors Magazine, where we desire to bridge the gap between brown authors across the world and to touch on topics that's affecting our brown communities that people don't want to talk about. So today I have um, amazing guests that's going to be sharing just a little bit about who she is, what she's doing, and how we can contact her. So I'm going to bring her up and I'm going to allow her to introduce herself and to share just a little bit about who she is. So here she is. Welcome, 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 welcome. How are Thank you? you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? I am great. I am great. Well, I am super excited to have you on my platform to give you an opportunity to share with those that are tuned in just a little bit about who you are and what you're doing. Yes, ma'am. So my name is Mikaela Kai Thomas. I am the author of Strip to My Truth, Unpacking the Emotional Baggage. Um, and it is really, truly an honor to be here. Uh, great opportunity. I appreciate you so much for having me. Um, today... Uh, I'm really just going to, you know, touch on getting out of your own way and, you know, in getting out of your own way, a lot of us are hurting. A lot of us are pretending to be more or less um, than who we actually are. Um, in my lifetime, I have definitely experienced these issues, um, you know, being who and what everyone else wanted me to be. And that was a part of what held me back a lot of times from my own purpose, um, from doing the things and being the person, the woman um, that I want to be, um, that I am destined to be. Um, so a lot of times, you know, we focus on, you know, too much on the outside world. We focus too much on, you know, the what ifs. We focus too much on the opinions and, um, the needs of others. So a lot of times we count ourselves out, um, and in counting ourselves out, unfortunately, that places us in, you know, compromising situations that places us in, in, you know, in, in dire need. We're lost. We're confused. We're, we're tired. Um, and we burn ourselves out on being stretched so thin. So, you know, when it comes back to getting out of your own way, you have to come to terms with some really, really tough decisions, some really, you know, honestly, a lot of times life or death. Because, you know, what you do and what you choose is based on those decisions. Um, me, myself, personally, um, you know, I've come from, you know, a loving family. However, you know, there are a lot of dark roads that I had to travel alone, you know, that my family didn't know of. And, and in that was, you know, homelessness. One of them was homelessness. Um We've been homeless more times than I'd like to admit to. Um, but unfortunately, that came from a lot of choices that we made. Um, you know, it's it's definitely, you know, I think most importantly in this season now where we are, you know, with the pandemic, with, you know, a lot of people having to be at home, having to stay at home, it hits harder um, than most times, than other times, you know, times that we deem to be normal times that we deem to be, um, you know, just hard times. This is one of the hardest things that I think that we've had to go through thus far. Um, and it can be a struggle. It can definitely be a struggle. Um, so with that, you know, I have personally, um, you know, had to face a lot of those structures those um, unsteady, unstable structures when it has come to being the one to make the decisions, um, you know, not just for my life, but for, you know, the lives of our children. You know, we, I am a mom of a large, beautifully blended family. And a lot of times, you know, when you make certain decisions, they're not just based on the welfare of yourself. They're also based on the welfare of others. So if you have children, if you're a parent, you definitely understand. Or even if you're just a caretaker of someone else, um, you get it. So, you know, it doesn't just affect you, what you do, what you say, how you act, how you, you know, 
relate to certain situations, it's kind of a domino effect. Um, one instance in particular, um, you know, I've been mostly in long-term relationships since I was a young adult, 18, 19 years old. Relationships lasting two years, five years, 10 years. Um, and, you know, I left a really, really bad situation, um, domestic violence situation, mentally, emotionally, physical abuse. And it was myself. It was, um, at the time, my four children. And, you know, it was a hard, hard decision to make. Um, I had to determine, you know, whether it was worth staying in this toxic situation or if leaving with nothing but the clothes on our back was the only other way out. Um, you know, it came to the point where I was literally in tears and just kind of at my wits end with everything before I decided, you know what, enough is enough. Um, I gave up an entire apartment that was in my name to get away. I gave up the clothes. I gave up the furniture. I gave up. I gave it all away just to get away. You know, when you're in situations such as domestic violence, it bears literally not just on your mind and your body, but it bears on your soul. That is a very, very heavy burden to carry on top of pretending like everything is OK. It's the mask that we wear. Um, and I Absolutely. definitely can relate. I, I definitely can relate because I am a six, six year survivor of domestic violence. Um, I was shot point blank range with a shot. So I definitely can relate um, to yeah. everything that you're saying right now. Um, yeah. So I, I, I thank you. I thank you for um, persevering and, and pressing and, and, and being that example for that person that may be going through and yeah. need that strength to pull on. Um, so I thank you for coming on the platform today and sharing that and being transparent because a yes. lot of us, a lot of us <clears throat> in our brown community, we, we mm -hmm. don't want to talk about the things mm -hmm. that are affecting us right now. Mm -hmm. You know, things that are, uh, that we see in, 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 in plain sight. We don't want to talk about, it. you mm -hmm. know, we, we let our pride, we let what other people think and what other people say we're more effect on us than what we feel about ourselves and what we think about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we need to, we need to get out of that. And, yes. and we need to, I, I guess we need to reset our minds. Yes. We need to reset our mindset. Yes. And yes. you know, it, it just, I thank you for coming on and sharing because a lot of the things that you just touched about, um, that you just talked on and just touched on, um, I, I've been through it myself. I've dealt with it. But and, and I've been in a place where, you know, like you, you know, I felt like, you know, even though I had my family and a lot of things mm -hmm. my family did not know I went through homelessness. I've dealt with that, too. They mm -hmm. didn't know. Step in my, I don't step in my car plenty of times at Walmart and ain't nobody know. But the things that we do. Yes. You know, the things that we do. And for I, I just thank you because you didn't give up. You you kept pressing. What was your motivation? What was your determination? What was it that you said that, that just made you say that I can't give up? I, I I have to, you know, I have to make a difference. If if not just for myself, but for my babies. What 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 was that determining factor that said, okay, I got to do this? Yeah. Because with you know me, what? I was at my wits' end. I I I I tried. I had failed my attempt at suicide, and there I was. And I was like, okay, Lord. Yeah. I, 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 I've tried my way. I, what, what was your What was your breaking point? <laughs> you know what? It honestly. So I'm my mother's only child, and my father. You know, I guess we can call him a Rolling Stone. And for me, it was looking at those four babies and saying, "Who is going to love them like you?" Who is going to take care of them like you? Who is going to make sure that they are okay? My mascara gonna start running. Who is going to make sure that they are okay and well cared for if you are not here? I have faced the suicide demon myself more times than I care to have ever seen him. But to literally hide bruises, to 
make excuses for busted lips to you know have to explain the unexplainable when it comes to well why are you such a recluse why does nobody see you why don't you go anywhere to be isolated from your friends and your family or to only show up and pop up you know so many times how do you continue to explain that how do you look at your children and say i gave up so it was either continue dealing with being broken down mentally, emotionally, being hurt physically, or walk away. You can't waver that type of, you can't waver that type of pain. You can't waver that type of, there's no reasonability in really your life or someone taking your life. I have girls. What example am I setting for my girls if they say, well, this is what happened to mommy? I could never fathom them normalizing that type of situation. They can't normalize that as love. They can't normalize that as being okay. They should never be loved in a way or think that they are being loved in a way that causes them any type of mental, emotional, or physical harm. They should never be loved in a way to live their life and their mother not be there because she gave up. That was the breaking point for me. It's either I walk away with my children with nothing but what we have and what we can carry or I stay here and I wait to die, either by my own terms or by his hands. Which one is it? And you never know the power, you never know the fight, you never know the strength that you have until you start to fight. You never know. Some demons are big, bad, and bold in human form, but as soon as you ball up that first fist, they retreat and they go running like a, a, a dog with his tail tucked between his legs. You just never know how circumstances can flip and change. When God says he will make your enemy your footstool, I can't even tell you how many times it has been that I have looked and I have watched and I have witnessed front row how things changed and how things manifested in ways that I didn't think were possible. I still deal with this demon to this day, mostly because we have three children together. So yes, it's, you know, that, and that's a whole different beast right there. That's a whole different book, <laughs> you know, dealing with custody battles, you know, when you're dealing with people like that, but it's, the weight of not having to deal with him in that way, intimately, emotionally, mentally, on that level, it's a weight that I, I thought I was going to die under. So for me, you know, when someone asks me, well, how did you get through homelessness? Because we bounced from pillow to post for the next, oh God, three, four years. And I had to make it work. They had to go to school every day. No excuses. They had to have clean clothes. I don't care if I walked around wearing the same baby food stained sweatpants for a week. They had to have clean clothes. They had to have shoes. They had to be fed. I don't care if I went two, three days without eating. As long as they were okay. That was my main, that was my main focus. And it took time for me to understand and realize that I was the reason why I wasn't going anywhere. I was the reason, I was the, the hindrance. I was blocking my own pathway. I suffered in silence, I did. I didn't tell anybody. I thought that it was gonna be my fault. And a lot of times that is the mentality of those who have been abused. It's made out to be your fault. If you did this differently, if you said this differently, maybe it wouldn't have went this way. It's never your fault. Uh, because no one wants to be 
beat. No one wants to be mm -hmm. out to any kind of way. No one wants to be belittled. You know, when mm -hmm. we entered into this relationship, we entered into this relationship because we had love for each other. And the love that we had for each other was supposed to be, um, you, we were supposed to protect each other. We're supposed to care for each other. We're supposed to be helpmates one to another. When one is going through, the other one is supposed to be able to lift them up. You know, that, that that's the type of arrangement that I entered into. You know, mm -hmm. that's what I stood before God and confessed. You know, and when those things started going wrong, you know, you, you question. You like, okay, well, what am I doing wrong? Again, mm -hmm. you really question yourself. Yeah, and but you, I, I I tell you I know I I I went through it I, I I dealt with it and then I was there I was like okay well I see that this person has issues he he was suffering with um with drug addiction just like I I, I just interviewed um Miss Sasha um she was mm -hmm. on earlier and um she uh, another guest that has um been through um domestic violence um and. She was like a lot of people. She said, well, she wasn't the one that just sit there and took it. She said she fought back. You know, she would fight back. So it wasn't like he was just beating on her. But she said she <laughs> felt like, you know, because they were married, you know, and going to church. And she was a little heavy at that time. She said she felt like, you know, she wanted to make this work because she took vows, you know, and we do that. And sometimes mm -hmm. we just have to understand that, you know, oh, well. God understands because this is not of God. He right. understands anything that's right. out of his will. He has no problem with us dissolving of it. Mm -hmm. And but we have to understand that, you know, especially with coming out of Domestic Violence Month. We just left out of Domestic Violence Awareness yeah. Month. Um, I actually did a um, domestic violence marathon. I was up for 24 hours mm -hmm. on, um, going into October 1st. And um, I had different people come across my platform. I had some ladies come on from Germany. I had just different people. We was on all day long. And they were coming on, sharing their journeys. They was coming on, talking about their organizations, talking about different things. We went over statistics. We went over all different types of things. But one thing, I, people have to understand, we don't want to be in this position. And people will belittle you. They will make you feel less than... They isolate you first to get you away from mm -hmm. your family. So when they start belittling you and start making you feel less than, you have nobody to to, to tell. You have right. nobody to talk to because you've been isolated. And that right. one person, because my sister, she's my best friend. She was my best friend. She, she was my second mom because when my mom passed away, she stepped in. And mm -hmm. she, she noticed the isolation. And she would always say stuff. Because I used to talk to my sister every day. And it went from talking to her every day to talking to her maybe once a week. And then it went from talking to her to text. Then he want to hold a conversation. So went to text. And then if she don't hear from me in a week, then she was calling. Because yeah. it, she knew it was totally out of, out of character. And then she would ask and I would say nothing was going on. I, I wore masks for years. But in 2018, October 2018, I said enough was enough. I packed up what I could pack in my car. And I went to Atlanta and I got there. I said, you know, I don't want to be here. I kept on going to New Orleans. I stayed in New Orleans for two weeks and I came back to Atlanta. I stayed there for a couple of months and then I moved to Myrtle Beach. I tell you, I've been at so much peace. So much peace. I found the power in me. The power in me. The power in me. And he says that we have that power. And I thank yes. you for finding that power. Finding that power to press. Yes. Power to write that book. I want to hear about that book because that yes. book is what's going to help set some people free. Yes. That's going to help set some people free. And I want to hear about it. And I want people to know how they can purchase that book. I want them to know how they can follow you on your um, various platforms. Yes, ma'am. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm just over here at all with you right now because I'm, I'm happy. My, 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 my soul is happy because you got out of your situation. My heart went out to you. I mean, tears began to flow from my eyes when you started telling your story. But I thank you for your transparency today. Yes, and coming out and sharing. You know, I everybody always want to know what do I have questions for my interviews? I don't because I know God is gonna move. Yeah. Every time yeah. I know he's gonna move, and I know he's gonna allow you guys to come on and share what y'all need to share. It's going to touch the life of the people that tune in. So I thank you. 
I thank you. Um, I want to hear about your book. Um, would you show us um, again um, your book if you have it? Um, 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 I do. My son was actually going to grab it, you know, and I should have had it with me. Um, but yes, yeah, uh, strip to my truth. Unpacking the amount, the emotional baggage it is exactly that. It is literally looking at my life and sharing that vulnerability, sharing those experiences that everyone is afraid to talk about, especially like you said, in our brown community, we're afraid to address these situations because they were made out to be taboo. They were made out to be what stays in, or what goes on in this house stays in this house. <laughs> and that's the biggest lie? Yes, the it hell. is. And they it need is. to stop, they, everybody needs to stop teaching their they kids that. But what needs to happen is we need to go back to spend the time with our kids. Absolutely. We need to stop letting um, YouTube and 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 and, and, and all these and different um, mm -hmm. these channels, all, and Kid Network and, and, and Cartoon Network, and all those network raise our kids. Yes. we need to spend time with our babies. We need to put into them. We need to affirm them. We need to let them know who they are. So yes. when they are put in these situations, they know who they are, and they know that they love. So they know that they don't have to deal with this. And they know that it's okay to open up. You know exactly. that it's okay to tell okay. and say this person or this thing hurt me. This situation didn't make me feel good. And that's the most important part. So in this book, Strip to My Truth, Unpacking the Emotional Baggage, I definitely open up that door. I open up the door and I talk about homelessness. I talk about emotional baggage. I, I talk about, you know, infidelity. I talk about being a mom of a large family. I talk about, you know, all of the things that really honestly a lot of people are ignorant to they're you know when it comes to having a large family blended family on top of that you know a lot of people are ignorant to you know how we get by you know just because we're a large family doesn't necessarily mean that we are you know food stamps and and and, and state assisted you know what i mean families exactly that's not always how it works you know there are a lot of stigmas and um a lot of contradictions regarding, you know, brown people in general, let alone the women. Okay. And, um, and, and we have to break that. We we have to break that. We, absolutely. Because, we. you know, we have allowed people to put stigmas on us. We've allowed yes. that and, and we've accepted it. You know, yes. and I refuse to accept anything that God say I ain't. So exactly. you, can have that. you can say what you want to yes. say. I know absolutely. who I am. And I'm Absolutely. walking in who I am. And yes. that's what more brown women and we we have to come together. We the one yes. thing we have to learn how to do is support each other. Yes. Because everybody yes. else doing it and been yes. doing it for years. I don't care yes. if their people are wrong, they people can be dead wrong, but they're gonna support them. They will support them in public or them in private. <laughs> for real. For real. <laughs> yes. they, I'm telling you, in public, they gonna they gonna support them like never before. But they may in private, they may get on them. But in public, oh, yeah. you will never know. You will never yes. know because that, that I was looking at. Um, if you go, I don't know how much you've been following the Breonna Taylor thing, but um, mm -hmm. Breonna Taylor, when when one of the officers that um actually um was involved in that incident, I think it was um actually the officer that actually did the um the killing. Mm -hmm. Um, they've been raising money for him on a Christian website. Because they didn't know what the outcome was going to be of uh, the cases or whatever. And they wanted to make sure that his family was going to be taken care of. So they put out a thing to raise $78,000. And this was back in um, September was the last time I really um, had a chance to look because I was doing uh, um, editorial. Mm -hmm. And they've raised $58,000 of the $78,000 already. Now, you know, kill and you know what? It's crazy because for a man that took someone else's life, they're ensuring they that his family is okay. But we can go out here and kill our own over something so trivial and not think twice about. See, that's the Miss Angela. Don't get me started because that's <laughs> that's, that a whole, that's a whole nother story. But that, yes. but that's the power that we need. We we yes. we got to we got to take that power back. We yes. didn't have to. And, you know, instead of us always at each other and in competition with each other, we have to learn how to support each other. That's why yes. I do what I do. Especially, I especially I, the women. Especially we the to. women. We are, con we are in constant competition with, the, with one another 
and quick to announce, you know, when we help someone else adjust their crown. And it's not about, you know, making the announcement. It's just knowing that you were able to assist, assist someone else, another queen, another mother, another woman in general with uplifting her, encouraging her, making sure that she is okay, making sure that, you know, she's fed, her kids are fed, give her a moment's peace. Even if it's half an hour to an hour, just making sure that you have done your part in instilling power in someone else. You know, it's not going to take away from you to instill power or encouragement or life into someone else. It's not. And that's another thing that I, you know, talk about in this book, because too often we're too quick to take away from each other instead of giving back. So we pile on layers and layers and layers and we're constantly wanting people to think and believe that we are who we who we're really not. So we pretend. And then when we're caught like a deer in headlights, then all of a sudden we're ready to attack. Instead of just being transparent and vulnerable, not just with other people, but with ourselves, you have to be honest about who you are. You have to be honest about your trans, your transgressions, your, your flaws, your mistakes, your errors, because those same things that you have gone through are the same things that can help someone else who is not only suffering in silence, but who's also facing the suicide demon, who's also facing domestic violence, who's also facing homelessness, who's a mother, whether they have one, two or 10 kids, and they're not sure what they're doing. So suffering in silence is more than just a taboo conversation, unspoken conversation. It's a weight that nobody should have to, to bear. Exactly. But this is, you know, literally my life in a nutshell. This is, you know, me being stripped to my truth. This is me not just talking about my life and, you know, putting my business out there. This is literally me reaching and teaching and touching lives that, no one thinks to search for the ones that fall through the cracks, the ones that are that people think are well off and really are not the ones that are struggling mentally, emotionally, the ones that have really forgotten about the person, you know, not the person that they were, but that the person that they're destined to be. You never want to go back to the person that you were, you know, that happy person, that OK person. You always want to elevate your healing. And I always say it, your healing is not. It's an it's everlasting. It's always evolving. Nothing about it is ever complete. So when you say, oh, I got over that, I'm healed, I'm good. You're not complete. Healing is never complete. You can never get to a state of completion with your healing. And you are so right, because, you know, I, I deal, I battle. <laughs> yeah. I battle with mental illness. It's a constant battle, and people think <laughs> people think it's not. I didn't know what it was, it and, and, and uh, about fifteen years ago, I didn't know what it was. I've been dealing with it since um, probably about nineteen ninety one, um, but didn't didn't know what it was. Didn't get it diagnosed until I want to say two thousand sixteen is when I first got my diagnosis. So I've been dealing with all these mood swings. I've been dealing with all these attitudes, and dealing with all this. You know, all this stuff for years. Didn't know what it was. But now that I know, and I know what triggers certain things, and I know what, I know how to deal with it. But yesterday, I had an incident, and I'd be the first. I talk about mine because <laughs> I won't be here. And I don't care. I, 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 it's like I'm transparent. I, mm -hmm. I, I like the truth. I want people to know who I am. Yeah. You know, so if, if I get out of character, then you know something may be going on and you can check me. Yeah. And yeah. I have no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? I want people yeah. to know that my people in my circle, I, 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 there's no secret. There's no secret, but it does not stop me. It does not stop my drive. It does not stop my motivation. It does not stop me from doing what I need to do. But I talk about it because I want people to be healed. I want people to know that they don't have to suffer in silence, like you said. They don't have to suffer in silence and they're not alone. Because there are a lot of us out here. I'm telling you, I got a book. We just released a book about suicide. This is a suicide awareness book. Um, 19 other individuals did this book with me. They share their journey. So just imagine all of the, the, the different types of mental illness we dealt with. Yes. You know, and yes. some of us are still, 
we always gonna deal with it. We just learn how to manage it. Some yes. of us still dealing with some more issues that came on because of the issues that we were dealing with and didn't know that these issues was in the background. But because right. we dealt right. with those issues, more issues come up. And that's what happened in life. But we just have to learn how to move, maneuver and deal with those things. Yes. How to find our happy. Yes. We have to find what makes you happy. Just like um, Saucer's thing. Gratitude. Learn how to be be grateful and show gratitude to yourself. She said sometimes, and, and she said don't allow people to make you think that it's cockiness. She said, because that's what people uh, sometimes put out. They don't want they don't want you to 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 pat yourself on the back. Mm -mm. They they want you to they they want you to be in bondage. They want yeah. you to be um feeling bad about yourself because some people they see the goodness that you're doing. They see the great things that you're doing, and they're envious because they're not doing it. And it's right. things that they need to be doing, things that they should be doing, but yeah. they don't want to deal with those things. But you chose to deal with them, so you're walking in yours. And some yes. people, don't, they don't like it. They're too afraid. It, it makes them uncomfortable. And that's the biggest thing because so many people are so comfortable with being in the current, you know, state of mental and emotional, you know, mayhem that they're in. It's like, say, it's like second nature. It's like paying a bill. They're used to it. You have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. When you are uncomfortable, some of the most amazing things happen that you would have never thought would have ever come to fruition. But it's like if you're constantly in the same cycle, the same hamster wheel, you'll never get off. You'll never get off because you're so used to running that same race. But then you're steady comparing yourself to other people's races. You're steady comparing your pace with their pace. And when they're ahead of you, then you get a sense of not just jealousy, but you get a sense of anger. And you direct it towards them, but really, if you hold up a mirror, you'll see exactly where it's towards. You have to be in those emotions. You have to set yourself, like really set yourself down and be in those emotions. What Medea say, sit down? Sit down and be mad. Sit down and be mad. Sit down and be upset. Sit down and cry. Let them tears fall. Because in that moment, you are literally in the emotions that you need to be in that are going to help you progress in your healing. <laughs> Nobody else can help you get there but you. Wow. And as long as you are standing in your own way, you will continue to be on the same hamster race until you decide to get off the wheel. Nobody can pull you up. Even if they did, you're going to get right back on it because you're you're still comfortable. You're too comfortable. Got to wake up. You got to wake, wake, wake up. Got to wake up. Wow. I thank God for you and Sasha for coming across my platform today because you guys have been on one accord. Um, your message have been pretty much on one accord. So I know that somebody tuning in yes. needed to hear this. Somebody on my platform needed to hear this today because this is the message. That yes. has come straight across my platform today. You know, it was dropped in my spirit this morning about hurts. Mm -hmm. You know, God dropped that word in my spirit this morning. And he been dropping words in my in my spirit where now he don't just drop the word and like he break the word down. Like what yes. the letter, yes. like each letter. Like and he's been doing it for a couple of months now. Um <clears throat> a couple of months ago it was life. And the word mm -hmm. life, the L, the I, the F, the E. And then mm -hmm. love, inspiration, the fear of God, and the E3 experience, which stands for educating, power, and encourage. That's what life means. That's what he dropped in my spirit. And I hadn't been doing that. You know, I, I, I say I have the fear of God, but I still had hate for people. How? When he didn't tell me to hate nobody, he said, love thy neighbor as I love myself. Mm -hmm. so that means <laughs> if I love myself, then I should be loving my neighbor. So mm -hmm. if, if 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 those two are not intertwining, then you need to check yourself. You got to check yourself. Yeah. Check yourself. But he gave me that word hurt this morning, and I'm still dealing with that one. But I um, I'm still dealing with that. But I wanted you guys because power was power is the word for the week for me. Yes. It's power. So I've been wanting everybody to talk about power and what that word means to you.
And um, while you're thinking about it, I'm going to share with you what um, God dropped in my spirit about the word power. And the P stands for position. It said position to overcome by being a willing vessel to empower others through your resilience. That's what he dropped in my spirit for the word power. Amen. The O, the W, the E, the R. Power is one. Hurt is a tough pill to swallow. The truth is a tough pill to swallow for a lot of us. Whether it's to somebody else, whether it's to ourselves, whether it's you know, even just a thought in our mind. It's it's a tough pill to swallow. So a lot of us, you know, even if we're thinking it to ourselves, we will deter that thought because it's too much. Power. If you can't swallow hurt, you can't face power. You can't face it. Power is one of those things where despite your fear, you stand in it and you get through some of the toughest situations and decisions and people and any and everything that you're facing. Power is what you take back when you are told that you won't be anything. Power is what you claim over your suicide demons. When they're trying to steal something from you, when they're trying to steal your life, power is what you take back when you reclaim your life. Power is love. Power is light. Power is life. When you look at your babies, that is power. When you take each crumbling, painstaking step, that is power. Even if you feel like you are going to fall, that is power. If you have been on drugs and been on the streets for 5, 10, 15, 20 years and you decide to get clean, that is power. When you can finally discover your truth, who you are, even if you're not fully sure, 100% of the complete definition, that is your power. Power is loving the unlovable. Power is loving those even though they hurt you. Power is forgiveness. Because when you go through situations like domestic violence, everything in that points to hatred to that other person. Everything in that makes you want to despise their very spirit. If you can look at that person and say, not only that I forgive you, but I love you, that's power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you can get up day in and day out despite your situations, homelessness. I slept in my car at a storage lot where all of our belongings were, where my children were at the babysitters. I worked two full-time jobs, one during the day, one at night. That's power. That's power. To get up and say, you got this. 60 seconds at a time. That's power. It don't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't matter what everyone else's definition of power is or perfection is. As long as you know that you are giving it every ounce of energy and every ounce of positivity, every ounce of everything in your being to get it done, that is your power. I've had attorneys barking down my neck to pay them money, 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 money for a child custody case. As I'm sleeping in my vehicle, my kids are at the babysitter. I'm taking off from my night shift job. And by the time I get paid every week, I got $20 to my name and that needs to go in my tank for the week. That's your power. When you can just walk, even though it hurts. When you breathe, even though it hurts. When you're awake, even though it hurts, that is your power. And you never let anybody take away your power. Your process is your power. It doesn't matter how ugly that process is. It can be dog ugly. Guess what? It's yours. Can't nobody take that from you. 
And it is your responsibility to never let someone take that from you. If you're going through a divorce, if you're going through a breakup, your kids ain't acting right, you got two days worth of groceries in your refrigerator, this is your process. This is not just a test. This is your process. And it's about what you are going to do with it. What decisions are you going to make to better your situation? We're not complaining no more. We are walking into 2021. 2020 was already in it. We don't have any more room for complaints or excuses. It's time to live. That's it. It's not your place to put yourself down. It's not your place to put nobody else down. It's not your place to sit stagnant in a place that you know you don't belong. It's time to move. I don't care if you have to crawl, you got the belly roll, you got the baby crawl. How you get there is how you get there because that's your journey. And it's not for anybody else to tell you how to get to your journey. Strip yourself of every lie that you have ever told yourself and that you have allowed other people to tell you. You are worthy. You are loved. You are appreciated. You are okay. I don't care who says that you're not going to make it. They're not writing your story. You are. I don't care who said that you can't do this. I don't care if you're 40, 50 years old, you decide to go be a, a singer, you go do that. If you decide to write a book, you go do that. I don't ever want to hear anybody say that they don't want to hear my story. There's somebody out there that needs to hear it. There's somebody out there that needs to know that you got through so that they know that they can get through. They're holding on to the smallest hand full of light. They need more to get through. They're struggling to find their light in the dark. They are struggling on hands and knees. They are crawling around in pitch darkness, trying to find that light switch. And they need you to help them find it. They need you to know yes. that they do have a light switch. They can turn it on. And that's what Strip to My Truth is about. It's about removing every layer of lies, every layer of insecurity, every layer of untruth, every layer of hurt, pain, disdain, anger, all of it, getting rid of it. Yes, we're, we're, we're still gonna struggle. There's no doubt about it. It's not perfection after all of the layers are removed. It's not, it's never perfection. It's not. It's not. You know, we just have to believe, we have to believe the word. You know, he Absolutely. tells us in, 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 in Luke 1 and 37, he said faith. He said, faith does not make it easy. It makes it, it possible. And it we have to it. know. It yes. And that lets you know right there. He tells you. He tells you in his word that it's not going to be easy. He don't tell us that it's going to be easy. Mm -hmm. But you know, one thing we have to remember that he's already sent the comforter. He yes. sent the comforter to be with us. And we know that even though we're in this natural journey, it may seem like we're in this natural journey alone, but that spiritual journey. We're not alone. He's right there with us. And oh, that's why we have to learn how to tap into our spiritual being. That's that's within us. That's that yes. power that works within us. Yes. That's when we got to learn how to tap into that. And we to those who are unsure, us. those are because there are a lot who are unsure of how to do that. They're unsure of how to tap into that power. They're unsure of their faith. They're unsure if they're even speaking to God the right way. The same way you speak to yourself, mm. the same way you speak to your friends, you, that's the same conversation you have with him. Okay. If that's how you relate to him, that's how you speak to him. He hears you either way it goes. And he know you. He made you. Come on now. He made you. He, let me tell you what he said in Jeremiah 1 and 5. He know every hair on your head. He called you by name. He said, I set you apart in your mother's womb. So if he set you apart, he made you different so that he would know you. From the rest of his kids. You know, he wants the best for all of us. And we're all fearfully and wonderfully made in his image. Yes. That's the connection that we have is we're made in his image spiritually. Yes. But see, we're not getting it. We're not getting it in the natural. See, we were we fighting and worrying about the natural things when he wants us to connect in the spirit. And yes. we all connect in the spirit and, and, and man. See, you igniting some stuff over here. I'm, I'm just <laughs> 
<laughs> I, I have really enjoyed always, um, chatting with you today. Yes, I, I truly have. Um, you are a blessing, and I, I, I pray that your book, your book will bless many. Um, your platform will bless many. I want you to share with those um, how they can follow you. I see Jamal. He's um, Jamil. He's already um, posted them up. Um, your links. So if you would just share um, how um, individuals can get in contact with you, I'll put them on the screen. He's put out yes, his stuff. He's been on, been on the on point. <laughs> but I am always reachable on Facebook. Um, you know, my username is Kai Thomas. You can reach me on the Strip to My Truth, that page on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram, Strip to My Truth. Um, or my website, www.mikhaelaLthomas.com. Um, looks like Jarmel's got it covered. Thank you. Thank you, King. Appreciate you. Um, but yes, I'm also on Twitter, uh, Kai's Truth. Um, yeah, the book is available on my website. Again, www.mikhaelaLthomas.com. Um, you can purchase the book there. Like I said, it's definitely definitely one of those reads that do you know it's an all-in-one it helps you get out of your own way um it's an inside look at you know my life and what i've gone through just so that you know you can see for yourself sometimes you know you relate to other situations you relate to the things that they go through and you know a lot of times again we compare you know someone else's situations with our own but that's not what it's for it's for you to know for you to understand that the walk that i walked you don't have to go through that same dark alley. You don't have to go through those same valleys, those same dark halls. A lot of times, you know, what most of us go through, we do the work for you. That was a part of our process to go through that journey. And before you get to that point, just stop. Just stop, read it. You know, listen a lot. We don't listen. <laughs> a lot of us don't listen. And, you know, it's very important to, you know, heed not just the warning, but the insight of others who are really trying to steer you in the right direction. You know, that's that's most important. And to always trust your gut. Trust, you know, that if you don't feel like a situation is right, run and go in the other direction. Other direction. Yeah. Other direction. Because nine times out of 10, your gut will tell you. And when your gut is speaking to you, I always say that is God letting you know without telling you directly, you need to make another choice. I definitely want to thank you for coming on today. I truly have been blessed. I tell you, as you were, we were sharing, <clears throat> when you were talking about power, you kept mentioning the word truth. And yes. um, I just released the book. Um, is me and 19 other women. And we're sharing our truth. We're sharing one of our truth. Of course, we can't share them all in one right. book. But we're sharing one of our truth in hopes to educate, empower, and encourage um, someone to walk in their purpose and to know that they're not in this alone, that other people have been where where, where they are and mm -hmm. where they're going. You know? And we just want to help them along the way and let them know that you know you don't have to go down these roads. Um, I have individuals that um, have been, um, I have one lady share her journey um, of molestation. Um, one um, share her journey of drug addiction. You know, um, we, we, we own it our truth because we want people healed. And then yes. he, he dropped in my spirit, truth, the T, the R, the U, the T, and the H. <laughs> and I had to put it on the back of the book. <laughs> had to put it on the back of the book. He dropped it in my spirit. And when I revealed it to the women that were a part of the um the project, they was like, wow, this is really us. This is really us. I said, well, it's not me. I said, God dropped this in my spirit. He mm -hmm. dropped it. And, and it's like I was literally, I was in the middle of posting on Facebook when he dropped the word power, when he dropped it in my spirit. I was posting something to a young lady. She had commented on the post and I was responding to her post. But what he dropped in my spirit for her, I had to go in the inbox and tell her. And when I tell you, we ministered to each other in the inbox because she said that she was going through some stuff and she told me what she had been going through. Mm -hmm. She said that she had been praying and crying out to God. And she came mm -hmm. on Facebook and saw my post. Mm -hmm. And that's when he dropped the word power to me and I gave it to her and she said, wow, I needed that. 
She said, I needed that. And so sometimes you, you just have to be know. willing. You just have to be yes. a willing vessel. And you have to be, you have to, you just have to be transparent and be real, be authentic, be who you are. Forget yeah. what people think. You know, allow yourself to heal. Allow yourself to heal. So if you got to be transparent, if you got to wear everything on your shoulder, wear it on you so people can see it. Because I want people here. I thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm super excited about all the things that God has in store for you. Yes, ma'am. I, 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 I bless you. If there's anything that I can do to assist you on your journey, um, please feel free to reach out to Aspiring Authors Magazine or AALAC. Um, we're here. You're here to assist. Yes, I, I love to educate, empower, and encourage individuals to walk in their purpose. And that's all I want to do is see people walking in their purpose. And you are definitely doing that. So I thank you. Um, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Yes, is there ma'am. anything that you would like to leave with the listeners before we leave on today? Yes, ma'am. Um, for all the listeners out there, just know that you can make it. Know that you are loved. I always say I love y'all on purpose because I do, because you never know what someone is going through. You know, whether I know you or not, I don't care if, you know, after you listen to this, you jump in my inbox. I love you. I love you on purpose because there's never a day that should go by where you don't feel loved or you don't feel that you are wanted in this life. You have a purpose here. And whether you have figured it out or not, your purpose will be made clear. And I just need you to stand in it and walk in it, no matter how much it hurts, no matter how uncomfortable it is, and no matter how imperfect it may be. Amen. Okay. Well, I thank you for coming on, and I pray that you have a blessed rest of your afternoon and the rest yes. of your week. Yes, Again, if I can you assist you, please feel free to reach out to me. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you thank so you. much for having me. I really appreciate you. Thank you. You have been tuned in to Up Close and Personal with Angela on behalf of Aspiring Office Magazine. I tell you, this week has started off amazing, you guys. I, four, four guests, four amazing guests already, and we're only on day two. It's just Tuesday, and I've had four amazing guests. When I tell you they've touched my spirit, they've touched my spirit. They've inspired me to not give up, to stay on this journey, to stay on this journey. So I hope you have been inspired today. Please, if you've been inspired, please go over and follow um, Miss Thomas. Um, she has an amazing platform. She has an amazing book and an amazing testimony. So I urge you to go over and follow her. I want to thank <clears throat> Swag Her Magazine for partnering with me and allowing me to showcase these amazing individuals this week. Um, it has truly been an honor. So I want to give them a shout out on today. Thank you, Swag Car Magazine. Thank you, Jamil, for all that you do. And I just wanted to shout you out, you guys out on today. Um, keep up the great work. And you guys have a great afternoon. Um, I will see you guys back tomorrow, 12 noon, two more amazing guests, 12 o'clock hour and one o'clock hour. Thank you guys for all your support. And if you're not following the magazine, please go over and follow the magazine, follow our YouTube page, because 2021, we have some amazing things coming up for you guys. I love you with the love of Christ. And there's nothing you can do about it.